Don't get me wrong. I would love to talk about politics less on this show, too. I'd love it if the animating force behind everything wrong with American politics didn't flow through religion. I'd love it if the tiny fraction of us who are willing to admit that there's no cosmic Disneyland awaiting us upon our death weren't the only goddamn bulwark between us and Christian fascism. But that's not the world we live in. So I'm going to talk about Tuesday's primary results. See, the media at large is basically presenting this round of primaries as a referendum on Trumpism and his election conspiracy bullshit. And while that is a fair framing, I fear that it understates the hell out of the problem. Because look, Trump is a 75-year-old overweight couch potato that lives on a diet of fast food burgers, burned steaks, and statins. As bad as he is, he's not going to be around a hell of a lot longer. And by personifying the problem in him, all too many pundits are giving us the false sense of hope that all we have to do is outlive Trump and the problem will start to fade. Yes, the things that he did will reverberate for a much longer time, most notably his Supreme Court picks. But as this theory holds, once he's gone, democracy can start to heal itself. But this ignores the real problem. It didn't start with Trump and it's not going to end with him. The real problem, as regular listeners are all too aware, is radical Christianity. It's shit like the prosperity gospel and the new apostolic reformation. It's shit like the seven mountains theology, which says that Christians have a divine obligation to take over the seven mountains of public life. Those being religion, family, education, government, the arts and business. It's the toxic blend of religion and politics that's gobbling up school boards, police departments, and municipal governments. It's the regressive, racist, homophobic, misogynistic movement that demands exceptions to contraception mandates and anti-discrimination laws. So the right framing of this isn't mainstream candidates versus Trump-endorsed candidates. It's mainstream authoritarian theocrats versus the motherfuckers so theocratically authoritarian they scare the mainstream ones. Let me give you a prime example out of Pennsylvania. Now, Many of you won't be familiar with the name Doug Mastriano, and to be honest, I am jealous of you. Mastriano earned Trump's endorsement in his campaign for Pennsylvania governor by doing everything but sucking his toadstool on national television. Mastriano is a former state senator that was all in on Trump's conspiracy bullshit about the 2020 election for pretty much the second the words escaped Trump's lips. He's gone on record several times saying that his state has an absolute right to replace the electors the voters chose with loyal Trumpies. Not only was he at the Stop the Steal rally on January 6th, but he was in the group that marched on the Capitol building. Since then, he's campaigned at conferences that promote QAnon and 9-11 conspiracy theories. And he's told everyone who cares to listen that he has every intent of using his power as governor to subvert democracy should a Democrat win the presidential election in 2024. Now, the mainstream media is calling this guy an election denier or an election conspiracist, which, you know, yeah, good, call him that. But I fear that's dangerously backwards facing. You hear that, you might think, sure, it's scary, but it's not like he can go back in time and prevent the Biden administration. It's not like the governor has the power to change out the electoral votes three years on. And even if he did, it's not like those would swing the election. But the dangerous aspect of this guy aren't in the fucking past. He's already pledged to use his power, sorry, abuse his power as governor to ensure that the next presidential election swings to the Republicans. Sure, he might have to conjure up some claims about voter fraud or illegitimacy, but given the standard of evidence his voters have settled on in the past, it's not like that's going to be hard to do. And that's not, by the way, because his voters are stupid. It's because they don't fucking care. I mean, who gives a shit whether the justification is true if you're on a mission from God and that divine authority is exactly what Mastriano has been campaigning on. Trump is God's chosen candidate. Satan thwarted God through election fraud. And it's the job of right thinking Christians to make sure that that never happens again. Hell, it's, it's not just their job. It's their holy fucking mission. See, the root of the problem here is that Christianity is ultimately incompatible with democracy. Right. Like if God's will is X, who gives a fuck that the will of the people is Y? You know, we're tempted to believe otherwise because Christianity and uh, secular government have coexisted for so long in the U.S., but it's always been tenuous. Our democracy was crafted by some of the least religious people of their day. It was born into a historical era famous for its embrace of secular solutions. But since then, Christianity has begrudgingly accepted a subservient role in our society. Every time it surges in popularity, it tries to chip away at the secular edifice that keeps it there. And as Trump seems all too eager to prove, their leaders don't need to embrace any of the morality that their religion ostensibly promotes. After all, if they took issue with immoral authoritarian bigots in charge, they wouldn't be worshiping Jehovah, now would they? 
Besides, how immoral can an act possibly be if the end result aligns with God's plans? So when Doug Mastriano promises to take back America for white, heterosexual, patriarchal Christians, his supporters don't really care how he gets there. So, yeah, sure, some of Trump's preferred candidates lost on Tuesday, and that's damn satisfying, right? It was super satisfying to see Madison Cawthorn get dumped on his ass in his primary, but Mastriano's victory, hell, it, even his viability overshadows all of that, and it casts a shadow at least long enough to darken Republican politics for years to come. 